It's a city where anything can happen. So what could go wrong or right as I hit up LA unscripted from Knott's Berry Farm? Woo! and restaurants to heart-pounding thrills, stage shows, plus family fun with Snoopy and the Peanuts gang. Knott's Berry Farm is 160 acres of a good time, and we are in the front of the line for it all. Hi, everyone. I'm Danny Devin, and buckle up, because look who came along for the ride, Doug Colk. Oh, we love having you here, Dougie Fresh. Oh, Dana, thank you so much for the ticket inside. You know, whenever I come to Knott's Berry Farm, I have two tasks. Okay, two. One, I have to bring my wife home a boysenberry pie. She loves the pies here. <laughs> Especially boysenberry. Okay. And two, I have to ride that. No! Oh! Hang time. <laughs> Which happens to have the steepest drop of any roller coaster in California. And in fact, when it opened back in 2018, guess who was the first to take the plunge? Well, he wa wanted to do it. And then, oh, what you think is the drop. I am stopped here facing straight down. Oh, man. Oh, I just got that first hand. Oh. So, Dana, I'm taking it you're not a fan of the roller coaster. No. <laughs> no, I don't really like heights at all, much less all the whatever. Oh, my God. I liked it when I was little. I just don't like them as an adult. Well, I do know, though, that you are not one to back down from a dare. And guess what? What? It's happening. What? Let's just say if I were to double dog Dana dare you to ride <laughs> hang time. Is that the one that goes upside down? Our guests have been very passionate about coming back. They're so excited, and it's very exciting for me and our team to see everyone brightening up and feeling happy after a year-long closure. So we were the first theme park in SoCal. So we've been part of the Southern California history for 100 years now. So back in 1920, Walter and Cordelia not moved their family onto this very land, which was a berry farm. It grew into a restaurant. Then now we're here at the iconic theme park, Knott's Berry Farm. For the park 100th anniversary Knott's Family Reunion, we're actually opening up with a brand new celebration, which features new park decor, new food items, not summer nights. We have a new K lighting tower moment. And we also have our newest attraction, which is Berry Tales, right behind me, Return to the Fair, which is a 4D dark ride attraction, which is fun for the whole family. <laughs> Most popular ride, of course, we've seen has been Hang Time, which is heart-stopping and thrilling. Oh my god. Can you see that? No! <laughs> oh my god, no! They just hang there. Oh, God, it's straight down. Oh. Dana, I've never known you to back out of a dare. I know, it's hurting me inside. I mean, I'll go on a roller coaster. It's more my speed. She's so excited. I don't know why. All right. Woo! He's uh, scared. I feel like I'm seven. He's scared. Raise your hand. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Okay, this is getting a little baby drop. Yeah! Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes, mission accomplished. 
Ah, now I know why Knott's is the 12th most visited theme park in the U.S. and gets about 4 million thrill seekers a year. It is so hard to believe that all of this grew out of a small 20-acre berry farm. And this summer, Knott's is celebrating its 100th anniversary, so you know we have to come back. You know, DK knows all the deets. I love it. Now, have you met our new LA Unscripter, Jasmine Simpkins, yet? In fact, I have. And I know, just like Knott's legendary Boysenberry Festival, I hear she's an LA original. That she is. Jasmine, welcome to LAU. I wanted to bring you here to this vegan restaurant. It's called The V-Tree here in Silver Lake. Super cool spot. It's brand new. And I hear their food is amazing. I'm V. And I'm Tree, and we're the co-owners of the V-Tree Silver, Silver Lake. The V-Tree Silver Lake. We opened because we actually have a restaurant in Charlotte, North Carolina as well. During the All-Star Weekend, Nick Cannon happened to Google us. He came in, he ordered everything we had twice. After that, he invited us out to Wild and Out in Atlanta to cook. Maybe a week or so after that, my wife and I, we looked at each other at the same time. I wonder how Nick would feel about bringing this to LA. So we, we called him up, he's like, let's do it. And that began our journey to LA. My wife, Chef Velvet, is known as a transition specialist. So she helps people transition from meat eaters to plant-based lifestyle. My goal was to bring something different that could potentially aid in a lot of the diseases and the things that are running rampant in our community. My great-grandmother and my grandmother were both absolute amazing chefs. And as a kid, I was always in the kitchen. The thing for me was to convince my taste buds that they were still eating things that they were used to. When people try our shrimp, they can't believe it's not shrimp. So you're having the texture, you're pulling it. So your mind is like, mm, this is familiar. But then once the spices hit it and are and blend it in. It's better than chicken, it feels better than chicken. It's also signals going off saying, oh, this is, I know that taste. So we specialize in the soul plate. That's because everyone wants to try everything, which is the shrimp, the chicken, the mac, yams, cornbread, and collard greens. Uh, we have a newbie here. She's a baby vegan. She's been vegan for about a uh, few months. Yeah, six months. We're gonna just play a little bit with some of, some of our favorites, which are our drums. What is the chicken made out of? So it's made out of tofu. Uh huh. So are these almost like a hot wing, or these are just like a signature fried this chicken wing? This is just a wing? signature wing. For me and my wife, it's always about community. When you come here, you feel like you're at your aunt's restaurant. The pictures on the wall, we have our real family to people who have become family. So you just became vegan about how many months ago? January, I started the year off saying I wanted to do like a cleanse and also just kind of figure out what my body liked and what it didn't like, and it's just stuck. Is there anything special about you that you want people to know. I really just want to make sure that the stories that I tell feel very LA centric because I'm an LA girl. I love this city. Welcome to Team LA U. Thank you. Jasmine, I am sending DK your way next. Oh my gosh, you guys, they have the best candy here at the Classic Candy Shop. And this wild ride just started. Coming up, spread your wings at a beautiful butterfly exhibit. More Knott's Berry Farm fun with LA Unscripted twists and turns, just like this lollipop. We'll be right back. is what to eat first funnel cake or mrs. Knott's home cooked chicken I can't decide I'm going funnel cake funnel cake let's do it okay welcome back to LA Unscripted everyone I'm Dana Devitt and I love my job but today is extra exciting spinning it here with me is Doug Kolk aka Dougie Fresh what's up Double D? <laughs> right now we are overlooking Knott's newest ride Barry Tales returns to the fair I can't wait to bring Presley here oh my god she is gonna love it you think she can she eat funnel cake yet 
Not yet, but it's around the corner. It's never too early. <laughs> okay, I guess you could say we are very excited to be here, but let's see where Olivia is spreading her wings. Dig in. We are at the new soar exhibit at the South Coast Botanic Garden. Look at this guy. So cute. Butterflies are a thing that we've grown up seeing, whether it's our storybooks, whether it's in pictures and paintings. Right off of Crenshaw, you go into the space and you don't dream how far back it goes. It's a wonderful garden that celebrated its 60th anniversary, but little known fact, we used to be a landfill. So although we're a 60-year-old botanic garden, in many ways we're still growing up. Now we have 87 acres of the most awesome collection of trees, palms, awesome desert collection. We have an absolutely unbelievable rose garden that has blossomed. All of these dowels are emerging butterflies. And what visitors can do is come up to the window and literally view life taking shape. So we go in right now and we stay in this area until that door is completely shut. In here, these are all the things that tropical butterflies love. There's another blue morpho right behind there. Sometimes what we also like to do for guests is we do these little lollipops. And they're so delicate that you can really see every intricate part of their bodies and you can observe them, how they feed, how they sleep. So it's a whole experience. So that looks like a gulf fritillary and I have a ruby spotted swallowtail. We have uh, close to 40 different species. I think I'm the butterfly whisperer. <laughs> We're hanging with our newest friends, park characters Moxie and Brawny, coyote pups. Aren't they the cutest you've ever seen? I love it. You guys are the cutest coyote pups I've ever seen. Let's do a coyote howl. Ready? Arr! Arr! Now a toast to summer happy hour with our sponsor and style smart partner, Anya Saar. So we, I, I feel like we've had a really rough year and I'm personally looking at ways I want to make my summer just a little bit more special, a little bit more like to be able to remember it a little bit more. Well, Dana, you can mix it up. Oh. With these Stella Rosa mixed cocktails. Well, Stella Rosa is originally known for their wines mm -hmm. and I love their wines because they're award winning. They are number one Italian wine brand in the US. Real taste comes naturally mm -hmm. and they're really low sugar. Yeah, this is like, by the way, this one right here, which is the Stella Rosa blueberry is yeah. 90 calories for right. like a serving. How many flavors are there actually? 35 flavors that spans over our, you know, our original bottle line, our fully sparkling line, our non-alcoholics, which are new this summer, and our Stella Rosa can. It's naturally gluten-free, naturally low calorie. We don't add any sugar. We add no extra preservatives. Everything that you're getting in this bottle comes from the fruit and the grapes that it was made from. There's no difference between the cans and what's in the bottle. This is kind of that perfect, like, in between. You can have your wine and also be drinking I can with everyone else. Honestly, it's probably better. And I love it for, you know, everything coming up this summer, right? You can take it yeah. to the beach, you can take it to the river. It's great for backyards, right? You don't have that glass that can break and shatter everywhere. Yeah. We're launching uh, three new flavors this summer of our three newest flavors. So, you know, we keep telling people like, keep an eye out. These are super convenient. And I don't know how I never knew this. I've lived in Los Angeles for over 20 years. There is a winery in downtown Los Angeles. Yeah, we've been here since 1917. We're like this secret little hidden gem in downtown LA, mainly Stella Rosa, which was born here. We like to say that Stella Rosa was made for the people who asked for it. So the pricing is just about the same. You can find these in your local grocery store. They retail around uh, $12 a bottle. Cans will differ, but those are still about uh, $6 for the case. So. You'll be able to find these anywhere and they're so affordable. You can buy Stella Rosa in any of your local grocery stores or liquor stores, or you can go to StellaRosaWines.com and order them to be shipped directly to your house. 
So Dana, mm -hmm. to celebrate summer, <laughs> we are going to make the Pina y Coco Mojito. Okay. How does that sound? It sounds really delicious. With the Stella Rosa watermelon. Okay. okay. So these are about 8.5 ounces. Okay, so we're going to put four ounces in. Four, so about half. Yeah. Okay. You know, plus or minus. It's such a pretty, like, light pink Isn't that color. So pretty. Yeah, okay. And then, this is my favorite part, just because it sounds so fancy mint sprigs. Ooh! We put in our mint sprigs. Okay. Here we go. Maybe. It's here. like a tree's growing out of mine. Dude, this is delicious. If you were sitting by the pool and drinking this, it would go down really easily. This is wow. so good. It's mint. And it's sweet, and yet it's a little tangy, like you said, with the lemon. We have, uh, I think, almost 200 recipes on our website at this point. Um, and also, when you go into the Stella Rosa Wines website, you can see, uh, pick each bottle uh, individually. It'll give you food pairings. It'll give you cocktail recipes. Um, it'll give you facts about all the flavor profiles, um, anything you could need. OK, Audrey. You have some very, very exciting news. This is a super VIP exclusive discount just for our unscripted viewers. What do you got? All right, just for you guys, we have 15% off six bottles or more on the Cella Rosa Wines website. And this can be used for any bottle of wine, mix and match, any flavors you want. 15% off six bottles or more with using the code STYLESMART at checkout. Cheers! What a nice celebration. This is my new drink for the summer. Right? Yeah. You're gonna celebrate real hard. Yes, I am. Boysenberry popcorn, who ever heard of that? I mean, it's actually really good. All right, we are not done popping around knots just yet. Next, more must-dos, plus where to find the real life Willy Wonka. LA Unscripted, we'll be right back. Farm is welcoming SoCal back in a big way. Doug Cole back with me. He was on the roller coaster. Okay, you guys, this one goes upside down a bunch of times. It hangs you for like six or seven seconds. It drops you. I mean, how are you feeling? Uh, I feel great. Dana, they don't call a hang time for nothing. It's true, they don't. That's <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, you know, and now we're in Ghost Town, continuing to celebrate Knott's 100th anniversary. The boysenberry is actually a hybrid berry. It is a loganberry, blackberry, and a red raspberry. And it was first cultivated and harvested, harvested here at Knott's Berry Farm. From there, it became so popular, they began making jams, jelly, and now we have a little bit of everything. And it's something that all of the boysenberries in the world can be traced right back here to Knott's Berry Farm. It's something great for us to celebrate the little berry that started it all. You know, I can pretty much eat my way through this part. I, I, I think you already have. That is so <laughs> rude and yet so true. But you guys, there's always room for dessert. Oh my gosh. Is this the chocolatier himself, Philip Ashley Ricks of Philip Ashley Chocolates? Yes, yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I like dark chocolate. Okay. Which it's not very common. We use more dark chocolate than any, but we do all. All we use all the curvatures, so milk chocolate, dark chocolate, white chocolate. We even have a blonde chocolate. Dark chocolate is what you end up with first. You really have to make milk chocolate, or you uh, make white chocolate from the cocoa butter. Now, when you talk about white chocolate, and then you say you have a blonde chocolate. What is the difference between the two? White chocolate is essentially cocoa butter with uh, milk powder, sh or sugar, and vanilla. And blonde is essentially white chocolate with the, the milk is toasted. It has this toasted shortbread, salted caramel-like property. Almost yeah. 15 years ago, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Philip Ashley chocolates. I was living in Baltimore at the time, and so I, w I was in the corporate world doing marketing, sales, branding type stuff, and woke up from a dream three o'clock in the morning and was like, you know what, I'm gonna be a chocolatier for the rest of my life and make chocolate. <laughs> so I grew up always enjoying chocolate and 
and really fascinated by the whole Willy Wonka story and that stick of gum. And so I always wanted to bring that roast beef potato and blueberry pie chewing gum that Willy Wonka made to, to life. A lot of it starts with imagination. I spent a lot of time daydreaming about chocolate. And what we're working on now is something called the Taste of America. It's a 50 piece box and it's a chocolate for every state. California, we're actually going to do a Napa Valley mountainside cab. Tennessee, since we're from Memphis, we're going to do the barbecue chocolate. Texas is Dr. Pepper because that's where that was invented. Forbes calling you the real life Willy Wonka. You're one of Oprah's favorite things. It was truly an honor. It's been an honor and it's been, you know, great, but there's a lot that comes with it. The expectation for perfection is there instantly. And that's the volume, you know, that comes in. In our case, overnight, we, we essentially rounded up six months worth of orders. Okay, so you work closely with St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Well, most of my involvement is for uh, events. So when they have events and fundraisers and things, I come in, make chocolates that are a part of either the event or being used in auctions and things like that. Through my foundation now that's being started, the Philip Ashley Foundation will really look at actual children's hospital initiatives, but also entrepreneurship and really working with minority-owned uh, and women-owned businesses to really help them to catapult their businesses. 30, Knott's also offering specialty drinks like this boysenberry punch. Pretty good, right? Oh, it's delicious. We do have beer and wine throughout the park. We have a, a, a liquor license in some areas. Our boysenberry wine is very popular. Well, we have had the absolute best time here at Knott's Berry Farm celebrating 100 years, and here is to 100 more. Doug, thank you so much for joining oh, thank me. thank you for having me, Dana. It was so fun, but now I'm gonna go get my turkey leg. You can't get any more food. I, there's still room. <laughs>